saw this flyer, <laughs> I don't know, it was like a, a copy of something in my doctor's office one time. And it, it was 50 Lessons from God Never Blinks by Regina Brett. And it was like printed out of a newspaper and then photocopied and put, put up on the board. But they only had about 20 of the life lessons printed up there. So I wrote it down, um, wrote down the title of it, and then searched for it online, and I found it. Um, and so I wanted to go over those. And 50 is quite a lot. I'll link it below so you can go look at it yourself. But um, they're good, actually. Um, this is, it was printed in, I did not get what newspaper, it was like a, some Midwest newspaper, and I don't remember, like Iowa or something, I forget. Um, but by, um, they were written by Regina Brett, B-R-E-T-T. -T. And so we'll just go through, I'll try and go through quickly, <laughs> since there are 50 of them. Number one, life isn't fair, but it's still good. When in doubt, just take the next small step. Life is too short to waste time hating anyone. Don't take yourself so seriously. No one else does. Pay off your credit cards every month. Oh, I'm trying on that one. <laughs> you don't have to win every argument. Agree to disagree. Cry with someone. It's more healing than crying alone. It's okay to get angry with God. He can take it. Save for retirement, starting with your first paycheck. And I wish I had done that. Mm. When it comes to chocolate, resistance is futile. Mm -hmm. Make peace with your past so it won't screw up the present. It's okay to let your children see you cry. Don't compare your life to others. You have no idea what their journey is all about. That is so true. If a relationship has to be a secret, you shouldn't be in it. Everything can change in the blink of an eye, but don't worry, because God never blinks. Life is too short for long pity parties. Get busy living or get busy dying. You can get through anything if you stay put in today. A writer writes, if you want to be a writer, write. It's never too late to have a happy childhood. The second one is up to you and no one else. I think I'm going to start that one. When it comes to going after what you love in life, don't take no for an answer. Burn the candles, use the nice sheets, wear the fancy lingerie. Don't save it for a special occasion. Today is special. Over prepare, then go with the flow. Be eccentric now. Don't wait for old age to wear purple. Hallelujah. The most important sex organ is the brain. Oh, I so agree with that. Intelligent men really do it for me. No one is in charge of your happiness except you. Frame every so-called disaster with these words. In five years, will this matter? Always choose life. Forgive everyone everything. What other people think of you is none of your business. Boy. Okay. I, I'm just thinking about in today's age with internet and trolling and everything. It's like, that's a nice one. Because really, who cares what anybody else thinks? Um, time heals almost everything. Give time time. However good or bad a situation is, it will change. Your job won't take care of you when you are sick. Your friends will. Stay in touch. Believe in miracles. God loves you because of who God is, not because of anything you did or didn't do. Whatever doesn't kill you really does make you stronger. Hmm. Growing old beats the alternative. Dying young. Your children get only one childhood. Make it memorable. 
Well, then up there it said something about ch second childhood. Eh. Read the Psalms. They cover every human emotion. Get outside every day. Miracles are waiting everywhere. If we all threw our problems in a pile and saw everyone else's, we'd grab ours back. Don't audit life. Show up and make the most of it now. Get rid of anything that isn't useful, beautiful, or joyful. All that truly matters in the end is that you loved. Envy is a waste of time. You already have everything you need. The best is yet to come. No matter how you feel, get up, dress up, and show up. Take a deep breath. It calms the mind. If you don't ask, you don't get. Yield. That's it, just yield. And number 50. Life isn't tied with a bow, but it's still a gift. And you know what? It doesn't, it doesn't say here when they were written. I didn't put that in. But um, I'll, I'll find out and I will link it, you know, I'll put a note down below. Um, because I'm pretty sure it was pre-internet. <laughs> uh, but everything, you know, even if it was written a hundred years ago, everything rings true. So it's just something to think about, you know. Um, there are some of these that I think I need to take into consideration and work into my daily life. So, 50 Lessons from God Never Blinks by Regina Brett. Think about it. Aloha. Okay, I'm back. Um, after going through all of the 50 Life Lessons, I was putting together the post and I realized there was really so much more to this. Um, when I went into the author's website, she, I found out, uh, I went into the fact section, and I found out she had actually come up with these life lessons, the original life lessons, she's come up with more, but she came up with them after going through breast cancer. Um, so I'm gonna read you a few things, um, and these are in the fact section on her website, which I will link below. So the one, the first question, I think it's the first question, one of the questions, how did you come up with your original list of 50 life lessons? And she answers, the night before my 45th birthday, I couldn't sleep. I felt so grateful to get to turn 45. Two of my aunts died of breast cancer before turning 45. I got breast cancer at 41, so I felt lucky to get to grow old. I started thinking about all life had taught me on all of the twists and turns and detours, then grabbed a journal and started catching these lessons as they poured out of me. And someone asked which lesson was the hardest to learn. And she said, lesson 48, if you don't ask, you don't get. I'm still trying to master that one. I'm better, but not where I'd like to be. I still find it hard to speak up. This one, I can relate back to the video I did where, you know, I said you have to ask for things. Um, you have to learn how to ask because people can't read your mind. They don't know what you're what you need. And so I'm going to link that below. I'll put a thing up here. And um, it, it just, that one really spoke to me because I am so bad at asking myself. And I am probably going to be working on that one for a long, long time. She also has a fact page specifically for cancer survivors. And so it says she was diagnosed in 1998 at the age of 41 with stage two cancer with a lump the size of a grape. So that big, which is bigger than mine was and mine was stage one. She says the worst part of having cancer for her was losing her hair and feeling like she had the flu for a year and losing friends that she couldn't deal with or losing the friends that who couldn't deal with it. Um, and I can relate to that one because I 
think I've mentioned it previously, but I had a cancer scare a few years before. And when I told some friends about it, uh, I, I can't believe the responses I got. And I can still hear them. One was, well, it's not like you're gonna die. And another one was, why are you telling me? And needless to say, those people are not in my life anymore. And when I had this cancer come up, the actual cancer, not just a scare, but the real cancer, because of the responses I got from other people and the fact that not only those two people were, you know, disappeared out of my life, there were others that disappeared out of my life. And because of that, I did not tell people about this cancer. I told my daughter, two friends, two close friends, and I told my boss in the HR department at work because I had to. Not because I wanted to, but because I had to in case of time missed. If I knew I was not going to miss any time from work, I would not have told anyone at work. So, you know, you're talking about a handful of people and one of them is not around anymore. Um, he just sort of faded away and I don't know that that had anything to do with my cancer, that I think that was just life. Um, but, yeah. So I didn't tell anybody until it was extremely obvious and my hair was gone and there was like no hiding it. Then I had to start telling people. So, you know, it's like how you do it is up to you. It, it, I was not comfortable telling people because of the reaction I had gotten previously. Uh, but some people are relators. They, they like to tell everything, you know, it's like they like to be up front and tell everything about what's going on. And so, you know, that, that really is up to you and how you deal with it. Um, and she says, cancer treatment is doable if you do it day by day, hour by hour, treatment by treatment. And that is true. And that's how you have to do it, pretty much minute by minute. It's because one minute you'll be fine, and the next minute it's all overwhelming, and you could be in tears or feel like a truck hit you, you know? Um, what should I say to someone who has cancer? Okay, this one goes back to what you shouldn't, should or shouldn't say to somebody who has the disease. Um, first, don't share any horror stories. <laughs> yeah, those are, yeah, don't say, oh, I had a friend who had cancer and he had to have all this removed and, and he couldn't walk afterwards and it was, he, or he couldn't talk and he, he couldn't do this or that. No, we don't want to hear that. We want to hear the good ones. You know, we want to hear, you know, I had a friend and it was dire, but she survived. And, you know, she's living a wonderful life now. You know, she's been cancer-free for 10 years. Yeah. Um, cancer is not a death sentence. People live long lives with cancer. What you say is, I'm here for you. And mean it. Don't say it if you don't mean it. Don't go missing in action when their hair falls out or they're too tired to go out and have fun with you. Um, when it comes to cancer, there are no right words. There are wrong words, but sometimes no words are best. If you don't know what to say, you know, but sometimes saying nothing can be better. Um, and your presence alone matters more than anything you can say. Um, a few cancer don'ts. Don't be afraid of the person. Cancer is not contagious. Don't flee. Cancer brings out the best and worst in people. And that's true because you get stressed, you get that anxiety I had talked about in the 
previous post. Um, so, you know, we get kind of <laughs> just put up with this for a little bit. <laughs> we'll get better. <laughs> um, don't offer medical advice. Don't offer medical advice or discourage the person from pursuing the course of treatment he or she has chosen. Input. Do 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 some input. Like if you hear about some radical new treatment, put it in front of us. You know, as an option. Not say you have to do this. Just hey, I heard about this. Have you heard about it? What do you think? Um, don't overreact and jump from diagnosis to death. No, just because somebody has cancer, does it's not a death sentence, not in this day and age. Don't blame the person for having cancer. I remember this from another one where, uh, another video I did where somebody blamed, um, what was, I think it was a pastor that blamed someone's, the cancer of somebody's daughter on this person's lack of faith. Horrific. Don't point out anything that isn't flattering, like how some how big someone someone's ears look when they're bald. Ugh. Yeah, I, I kind of we did that one too. I mean, do you like how short your hair is? Anyway, um, don't ask personal questions that only doctors and spouses are allowed to ask. Don't say you know how the person feels. You don't. And you never say, in any circumstance, I know how you feel. Because everyone experiences everything differently. Um, you know, maybe both of our mothers had Alzheimer's. But our experiences with it will be vastly different. I can almost guarantee that, that they will be different. Um, you know, maybe your father died of a stroke and somebody else's father died of a stroke, but their experience with that death, how they dealt with it, how they handled it, what they felt inside, their relationship with their father, everything about it is going to be different. You do not know how they feel. Okay. Now that I've lectured, <laughs> now for the do's. Stay in touch by phone, text, emails, and cards. I don't know if cards are such a big thing anymore, but um, I, I'm big on text and email. I'm like not really good on the phone, but you know, but text and email allow the person to respond as energy allows. Send movies, books, gift baskets, flowers, and meals in containers the person doesn't have to return. I like that. Um, instead of asking, what can I do? Because that is so vague and generic. And then you put somebody on the spot. Oh God, what do I need? And we go back to learning how to ask. People don't want to ask for things. Um, they have a hard time asking for specifics. So instead of asking, what can I do? Offer something. Um, when someone throws out choices, it makes makes it easier to grab one when your brain is fuzzy from chemo. So ask, can I pick up something for you, you know, for dinner? Or um, do you want me to pick up some books from the library for you? Or um, do you want to go to a movie? You know, I want to go see this movie. You want to come with me? Um, or it even says, can I get you a milkshake? <laughs> You know, it's like, you know, if, you know, it, okay, like if you're going to the grocery, and I think I did this one in another video too, if you're going to the grocery store, offer to pick something up for them. If, you know, if you're going here, going there, offer. Um, offer to do something around the house, offer to take care of kids, offer specific. Um, ask the person's main caretaker too, if they need something. Um, watch the kids, bring over a meal, um, run an errand, like grocery store. Um, so not just the person with cancer, but you know, the husband is taking care of them, or the daughter or parent, 
ask them, they might need relief. Maybe you can take care of this person and give them a couple of hours to themselves. When I took care of my mother, when she had Alzheimer's, ah, oh, that would have been such a relief. There was no such thing in those days. And, and that was not that long ago, really. You know, we're talking 15 years ago, and there was no such thing as um, Alzheimer's support groups, not in our area, at least our small town area. And there was no place to get relief. We were lucky, it was myself and my daughter taking care of her. I worked days, my daughter worked nights, and we shifted off. And we always had each other to rely on. And I cannot imagine doing that on my own. I would have gone stark raving mad. And so I have vowed that I will never, if I get Alzheimer's, I will never put that on my daughter. I will not. Okay, sorry I went off. Um, when in doubt, just ask, what can I do to make you more comfortable? Or better yet, think of three specific things that might work and offer those as suggestions. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they're thinking of here, um, but, you know, maybe doing laundry or, I don't know. Um, Take nothing personal if the person gets irritated, tense, sad, or depressed, anxiety, and doesn't call back right away. Um, keep offering, keep the friendship going. Those are just like key points because someone who is sick, someone who's going through chemo, radiation, they really need the friendship and the support. So. And if you're watching this because you have cancer, you know that. You, you're there. And it, some days it's hard not to be that person that snaps at everybody. And when you're working through it and you have to maintain that outside, you know, everything's fine, I'm happy, yay. And inside you just want to tear somebody's head off like Godzilla. And yeah, so it can be hard sometimes. And sometimes with your friends, you let that Godzilla side out. And that, you know, if you're a caregiver or a friend who's watching this, don't let that deter you. Just know that it's just aggravation, it's anxiety, it's pain, it's frustration. So, um, Regina Brett, um, and these were the life lessons that she published, and I'm going to have everything down below. And it, it's worth a read, even if you're not really spiritual, you know, some of the stuff that she says is okay. You know, cry with someone, it's more healing than crying alone. Over prepare, then go with the flow. Better to be over prepared than under prepared. Is anyone in a hurricane zone knows yeah so you know forgive everyone everything life is too short you can't hold on to grudges so there you go and if you have any comments any more put your own life lessons down below comment and what do you have let's see how they stack up I'll talk to you later bye bye